Perhaps the most groundbreaking discovery in the history of medicine was the development of penicillin, a substance which upon its discovery was called a true miracle. Finally, a drug had been found which could cure people of the most dreaded infections. And although several pathogenic bacteria became resistant to penicillin, new types of antibiotics were found to suppress these illnesses. However, due to abuse and an overconsumption of penicillin, many pathogenic bacteria soon outwitted the miracle drug. Resistant bacteria are gaining ground, and in the meanwhile, the development of new medicines has practically come to a halt. Allied casualties in Normandy receive the most expert medical care science can provide. Two modern treatments, penicillin and blood transfusion, have cheated death in thousands of cases. Gangrene, from which millions have perished in past wars, has been conquered by the miracle of penicillin. Thousands of men, thanks to penicillin, will come home to their thankful families. The whole world of peace to come will reap the benefits of this great wartime medical discovery. Science has won another victory over death. Throughout most of human history, infectious germs have caused death and destruction. For centuries, deadly diseases such as the plague, tuberculosis and gangrene had befallen people all over the world, in the countryside, in cities and on the battlefield. If we go back to 100 years, to the mid-19th century, many more soldiers died of infection than died directly from the explosions of cannons. By World War I, already the system was changing because there was a process for handling injured soldiers. But you couldn't cure infection. You could prevent it by bandaging soldiers quickly, but often they suffered gangrene and many soldiers died from infection. Until the beginning of the 20th century, the risk of infection had made it difficult to treat many types of diseases. It's caused uh, significant infections in children and newborns, they contaminated wounds. So for example, when you were in an automobile accident, there was always this great concern that there would be infection. And so in some cases, you'd almost rather amputate the leg than take the risk that the infection would take off. The hunt for medicine that can cure dreaded diseases such as syphilis, gonorrhea, and pneumonia has been going on since the beginning of civilization. But it was not until the end of the 19th century that the discovery of how infectious diseases are spread came about. It was a big turning point that it was discovered that single microbes would cause the disease. And the thought was there that if we could find what was then called by Paul Eric a magic bullet, something that would enter the body and seek out the invaders, namely the bacteria, then we could cure the patient without harming the patient. At the beginning of the 20th century, German doctor Paul Ehrlich developed a substance similar to arsenic with which to treat patients with syphilis. However, this proved to be toxic and had strong side effects. Then, in 1928, Scottish doctor Alexander Fleming accidentally stumbled upon a completely new medicine. One day, whilst working with bacterial cultures, Fleming discovered a spot of mold. It wasn't unusual for petri dishes to be polluted by fungus, but the odd thing was that the bacteria around the mold had disappeared. Fleming found this fungus, known as penicillin, could prevent the growth of dangerous bacteria such as staphylococci and anthrax. Experiments on rabbits showed that penicillin was apparently harmless, but Fleming didn't succeed in proving that the substance had a curative effect on people. This happened over 13 years later, and penicillin was then mass-produced in the United States. Through mass production methods, America is continually increasing its output of penicillin, 
the new drug that affects almost miraculous cures. The liquid medium in these bottles will grow the mold that forms penicillin. All penicillin produced is used by the Allied fighting forces. The liquid now charged with penicillin is poured from the bottles. Turned into a powder, it is ready for use. The manufacture of penicillin had great significance during World War II. On the cover of Time magazine in May 1944, it said that Fleming's medicine would save more lives than war could spend. Penicillin was widely used to save the lives of soldiers suffering from septicemia, but also to cure different types of diseases among soldiers. Every time there's a war, the venereal disease rate takes a jump. It's bad enough in peacetime, but now it's like a forest fire. No organization of saboteurs could do half this damage to our army. One of the characteristic diseases of soldiers are sexually transmitted diseases. If you imagine Europe in 1945, starving women, millions of soldiers, young men, separated from their girlfriends, from their wives, there was the beginning of a terrible syphilis epidemic. We average 30 venereal disease cases each year out of every thousand men in uniform. That means 300,000 men put out of action each year in a 10 million men army. <laughs> Think of that, 300,000 casualties without even a battle. You could reasonably say, I'm sh and I believe this to be sure, that had there not been penicillin, then syphilis would have been for Europe what AIDS later became for Africa. And that memory of this wonder drug is very important in understanding why later we came to assume that penicillin would solve every one of our problems. In the post-war era, a long line of new antibiotics that could cure many major diseases was developed. Streptomycin, for example, cures tuberculosis, and tetracycline is used to treat pneumonia. In just under 30 years, the mortality rate of young patients suffering from pneumonia fell tenfold. When antibiotics were introduced, there was a sharp decline in the loss of life and hospitalization of patients with pneumonias, urinary tract infections, skin infections. I think it had a enormous, enormous effect. And I think this is why many in the clinical medicine field believe that antibiotics are one of the treasures that we have in our armamentarium to treat patients. Of course, then it is used not just for the gravely ill, but for people suffering those irritating illnesses which we have every day. The irritating infections, the sore throats, the sore fingers. And of course, maybe even, we think these will not only make my life longer, but also happier. In fact, you could get penicillin in face creams. You could get it in cosmetics. And the effect of that, of course, was if you had a small infection, it would work. But basically, the whole idea that was conceived was that this was a miracle drug for many different ailments. In the late 1940s, a new property of antibiotics was discovered which had great influence on the production of pigs, chickens and other livestock. One of the manufacturers of a tetracycline, which comes from a soil organism, had this huge pounds and pounds and pounds of the protein left over from the organism after they had extracted their tetracycline. And they wondered if it couldn't be put to some use, such as being used as feed for chickens and other animals. When they added this 
carcasses of bacteria to the normal feed, they found that the animals grew bigger for less feed. And the discoverers thought they had found a new vitamin. 